Hey everyone, it is week 25 of Reasons to Hope and we are going live from Peaks Island in Maine, just off the coast of Portland. And I just got on the ferry, which was beautiful and it took just 20 minutes to get across Casco Bay. And I'm super happy to be back on the road again, getting to travel and I'm looking forward to all the adventures that all of us will be experiencing this summer. So that's my number one gratitude for the week. My number one reason to hope is just being able to get outside and be alive and be healthy enough to travel and to experience all the things I've been experiencing. You guys, we have seriously, we've been on the road for seven days now. We're, we're working on some new shows for consensus that I'm so excited to tell you about. Um, and we have met, man, I think I've probably interviewed over 20 people all across the great state of Maine. And I mean, I was out on a lobster boat with a couple lobstermen and their story alone, which was like a total unplanned, accidental sort of story to get, it was so powerful. It's basically there is this older gentleman, lobsterman, Dan, who has been fishing from this small harbor for his whole entire life. He first started going out on the boats when he was seven or eight, and he had maybe like 10, 15 traps, and then he went up to 100 traps, and now he does 200. And he's probably in his 60s now, late 60s, and he um, goes out by himself every day at whatever five in the morning and so I happened to be talking with his nephew for another story we were covering in that same location and but we were looking for someone to be able to take us out on a lobster boat um, so we could really get the footage that we were hoping for to um, round out the full experience for the show and so we end up meeting this guy Dan who uh, says he's gonna take us out on the boat and as we're all getting ready to go, this guy Gary shows up and Gary's like looking all over for Dan because by this time it's five in the afternoon and Dan should not be out on his lobster boat. So when Gary calls Dan, basically he doesn't find him there. He goes over to his house to check on him, whatever. So Gary's this retired fisherman who checks in on Dan and helps him fish his lobster even though Gary thinks lobster fishing is boring, but he still just doesn't want Dan to be out on the boat alone. And so when he went to Dan's house and he couldn't find him, he got nervous Then he heard his boat down at the harbor. He came down and found out Dan's here with the film crew. So Gary comes out on the boat with us and absolutely regales us with tales. I mean, he has been fishing all over the world, but the most incredible aspect of the whole thing was how much love he has for his friend Dan and how he was just saying, look, I look out for Dan because Dan looks out for everyone else and but himself and he he takes care of the whole community and Gary's just listing up all these things that Dan does for people and how he'll give people the shirt off his back and he'll take strangers out on his lobster boat and you know it was just this beautiful sort of firsthand like real experience of two humans who you know have been doing something for so long and they're finding hope in their friendship and they're finding gratitude you know, in the everyday experiences of just getting to be together and be there for each other. And it just gave me so much hope. I was, I'm, I'm just so thankful. And yes, I see that comment. Men of the sea are awesome. Oh my gosh, your husband's a boat captain. That's amazing. Um, I really feel like I might move to Maine. So if anybody is watching this, who uh, would be concerned about <laughs> that, I'm sorry. This is, uh, in Melody Ann Cox, to answer you, this is um, Peaks Island. It's amazing. It's this in the Casco Bay, just off Portland. You can see Portland in the background there, maybe. Um, I just took the ferry over. We have been all up the coast of Maine this past week, and so this is the last day we got to talk with, like I said, I think 20 people in uh, places all up through. We went to... Um, the University of Maine, we went up to Tenants Harbor, and we went all the way inland to Dover Foxcroft, visited a bunch of farms, got to check out some amazing breweries, and most importantly, just really hear these stories of hope 
and resilience that you know people are coming out in droves after the pandemic is kind of as it's abating there's a lot of like hope there's a lot of hope out here there's a lot of joy and there's a lot of celebration of nature and the great outdoors obviously because i'm in a place like maine um, that's really easy to experience because it's all around us but um, this week i wrote a piece on rootandvinenews.com about kicking off summer because you know yesterday was the first day of summer it was the solstice which is one of my favorite days in the whole in the whole year but basically um kicking off a summer that maybe is going to be pretty epic because we're making up for um, some of the things we might have missed last year. And so I think our experiences hopefully will be deeper and richer because we are coming into this new season with a whole lot of gratitude for our health, um, our families, the people that you know live next door to us because we've been cooped up at home for a lot of the past year and so whether or not you get to adventure out and and go on a vacation or travel across the country or you know whether you're just going to be kicking it in your own um, town I think the really cool thing is that there's really the opportunity to connect with nature and to be outside and to be inspired and to connect with each other um, in the summer months because we slow down a little bit and we have this weather that allows us to just kind of sit outside and listen to each other's stories and so I really encourage you if you can't travel right now because it does you know travel is a total luxury it takes energy it takes cash it takes good health um, it takes time if you don't have all that, you definitely probably have a park near you, a metro park, a city park, a state park, a national park. Um, we put a link in the story at rootandbynews.com to find your national parks. And I don't know if any of you were here last week for Brittany Cummins or two weeks ago, um, Brittany Cummins who hiked the Appalachian Trail and who has now become my great outdoor consultant. But she was telling me how her family has, uh, you know, a goal of theirs growing up was to hike every single uh, state park. So not through the whole thing, but just to make sure that they visited them, which I think is gonna be an ongoing life goal because I'm pretty sure there are about 400 of them. But the point is you can look at just your state parks or your, um, sorry, she was looking at national parks, but you can look at your state parks and I'm sure that there's something near you that will give you this uh, sense of adventure regardless of how far you actually travel for it. And if you can't go anywhere, there's always somebody who has a story. And I think the most beautiful gift that we have is our own attention. So, you know, I'm riding over on the ferry. I'm here, my crew just left, so I'm here by myself for the rest of the trip. And I just was so overwhelmed by the beauty around me. And it was just like all I could do to just, you know, take it in. I couldn't even, I couldn't even take it all in. So there's that individual experience we have, this opportunity, it's invitation for awe and wonder. And then there's also just the opportunity to listen to our family, our friends, our neighbors, uh, to tell their stories of adventure and travel. And that's another way that we can experience this sort of great outdoor adventure that summer offers us. And so um, I'm exhausted, but I'm so happy and I want to check out some of your comments. Yes, lobster is abundant. No, I did not go to, I don't even know how to say that, and I'm embarrassed to try. Ulgin quit. I will tell you that there's a lot of amazing town names in Maine, and I have pretty much butchered them all. But the Mainers are really friendly, and they are uh, very patient, and they have taught me a lot already. So, yes, and Kitty, I see we learned to appreciate the little things in life that were being taken for granted. Thank you, thank you for that. Thank you for the reminder. Thank you all for being here. And yes, I'm definitely, I had the best lobster roll at Luke's Lobster, if anyone. Luke's is uh, over in Portland Pier, but you can also, they're also in like 10 different states. And we're gonna do a story, we have a story on them already on um, the business download, which is a sister site of ours, but we're doing a really fun video story on them. And those guys are so awesome. And they're, you know, they're doing, things right they're taking care of their people they're uh, fishing sustainably and their lobster rolls are the best I've ever had and so um, yes I am pretty close I'm oh I can walk along the ocean okay so Melody it seems like you know uh, what you're talking about you should be my tour guide I'm going to my next move is to walk one block over rent a bicycle and ride my way around this island so that is my plan I'm gonna get some lobster tonight 
and then I'm going to head back to the great state of Ohio. So thank you all for being here. I want to know where you're going this summer. So put it in the comments. Where are you heading? What are you excited to see? Hashtag reasons to hope. And we have an incredible guest next week. So make sure you put it on your calendar to join us live at three o'clock Eastern next, next Monday, because this is going to be an incredible story you don't want to miss. Thank you all so much and have a beautiful week. Goodbye from Maine.